Bill Bradley, I'm an extreme endurance athlete. The topic of the day's video is don't just survive, kick ass. I ran into somebody who, who follows me up, you know, I was up on doing some training this week up, uh, up on the mountain and uh, he, I think he, you know, anyway, he was like 60 years old and he said, he says, Bill, he says, keep, you know, we talked about what he was doing. He was, you know, he's racing triathlons and stuff. And I uh, told him the events I have coming up, the uh, 160 mile Tascobia run, the 135 mile Arrowhead and climbing Aguancagua down in uh, South America. And he said, he looked at me and he goes, right when we were leaving each other, he says, keep surviving. <laughs> and I was thinking, that's really what it's been. So that was, that's a great compliment because that means, you know, he noticed that I've been in the arena. I keep going for these things and I've been getting my butt kicked over and over and over again. I mean, Denali, I've not made three times. I got that coming up in, uh, in February. And then uh, Arrowhead has been... Um, Arrowhead's been six tries at Arrowhead, uh, you know, which is the coldest spot in the continental U.S., and we do it during the coldest month of the year, the coldest time of the year, period. I love that race. It's so crazy, insanely cold. But anyway, um, and so he said, keep surviving. And after I left with him, I kept thinking about it. I go, okay, so I'm motivating this guy. You know, he's like 60 years old. I'm I'm really 30. I'm 30, but my birth certificate says 60, but my brain thinks it's 30 because I always tell myself in the mirror, you're 30, you're 30, you're 30. <laughs> I have a brainwash that it's 30. And if I get a little tired and you ask me, I'm going to say 30 because I did that to my sister. <laughs> she said, what do you expect? I told her I was really tired of this big workout. What do you expect? You're, this was like a couple years ago. She goes, you're 54 years old. And I go, no, I'm not. I'm 30. <laughs> and then afterwards, I go, whoa, that's really starting to sink in. I love it. So anyway, he said, you know, like surviving, just that I'm getting in the arena, staying alive, basically. And, uh, but you know what? He hasn't seen crap yet, man. Because I was limited. I was working a full-time job, commuting, you know, an hour, hour and a half a day, working full-time and just draining all my energy. And, uh, you know, I've pretty much probably doubled my training now because I've freed myself up from working, you know, by just quitting. <laughs> I have enough money. I cashed it all my 401k money. I got enough money to last two years. So, and the universe wants me to do these things. I'm supposed to inspire people. But you know what? You don't inspire people till you start finishing. Conor McGregor. So I did, I, you know, he was one of the guys that inspired me on this. Um, because he said, uh, when he, he was working as an apprentice plumber, uh, and it was a big industrial job. He said it was freezing, you know, wet, you know, and cause Ireland's wet. And, uh, and he, he was commute, he was working eight hours, commuting like an hour and a half each way. And then, uh, he was still training, you know, three hours for MMA. And he went to his coach. He said, coach. What's it going to take for me to get to the next level? What's it going to take? And the next level for him at the time was the UFC. And he says, Connor, you need to train six hours a day. You need to train six hours a day. And he knew not possible with his schedule, not possible. Very similar to how I felt, you know, just all my energy was just gone by the time I would do that commute up here. And, uh, and so he quit his job. He went on the dole, which is welfare. And he lived at home, and his dad, like, his dad was all, uh, his, da his dad, well, he said his dad would fight with him every day to go to work because his dad's old school, and they never had anybody in Ireland ever make it to the MMA. So he didn't even really, he thought it was a pipe dream, you know. And so Connor just kept training and training and training. After two years of fighting his dad off, he, there was a, the phone started ringing in, his, in their house, and nobody was around but him. And he goes, oh, no, I don't want to answer this. It's going to be my dad. I know it is. He's gonna, we're going to get in a big fight again, blah, blah, blah. And he, he let. And so finally, he goes, I, it just kept ringing. So he, he finally went over and answered, and they go. And he picked it up, and they go. He hears this voice. This is the UFC. Your first fight is in six weeks. <laughs> that almost makes me tear up. Is that freaking awesome? That's so freaking awesome, man. So, you know, and then he went on like a couple years later, I guess two or three years, whatever it was, won a world championship. And then he won another world championship, another belt. 
And then he went on and fight, you know, Floyd Mayweather in boxing for, you know, a huge amount of money. But anyway, um, yeah, he just was, uh, he was not going to just survive. He was going to kick ass, and that's what I'm doing. So, that, I mean, I, I will tell you, that was one of the things I thought about when I made my decision to quit my job. And like I said, I got enough money to last like two years. And I said, screw it. I'm going for it, man. I'm going for it like Connor did. I'm going for it. I only got Furley, my little dog here, trying to get me out the door. Go to work! I go, no, I'm going to go run. <laughs> I'm going to go hike. I'm going to go weight lift. I'm going to go yoga. <laughs> anyway, don't survive. Kick ass. Because these guys haven't seen anything yet until I get out there now. I just, I'm at a whole nother level of training. Drop my weight down. I'm down 25 pounds from when I tried it last year. And uh, it's going to be huge. Huge. Ugh! Eye of the tiger. Kick ass. We don't just survive. We kick ass. Thank you.